Hi, this is Jeff Trotman. When I first started working with Microsoft Azure, I was confused about the relationship between tenants and subscriptions. Hopefully, this will help you understand how this works. This is the Azure hierarchy. At the bottom, we have individual resources like a virtual machine or an Azure storage account. When you create a resource, Azure requires you to place it in a resource group. I'm not going to talk much about resource groups in this video, but you can think of them as folders to help organize resources and permissions. So, all resources belong to exactly one resource group, resource groups belong to exactly one subscription, and subscriptions belong to exactly one tenant. If you hear the terms directory or organization, those mean the same thing as tenant in this context. They're synonyms. You'll also hear the term Azure AD or Active Directory. The top block is technically an Azure AD tenant. Okay, but what does that mean? Let's focus on the top two blocks. As I said, a subscription belongs to a tenant. Resources like virtual machines and Azure storage accounts are part of subscriptions, while users are defined in the tenant. These aren't the user accounts that can log into a virtual machine, that's different. These are the Azure AD users that can log in to portal.azure.com to administer Azure tenants and subscriptions. The important thing to realize is that you pay Microsoft money based on your subscriptions. Charges accrue at the subscription level, not at the tenant level. Why separate them out? As you use Azure more, you may want different invoices for different resources. You can do this by setting up additional subscriptions. Each subscription gets its own monthly invoice, but you can manage multiple subscriptions with the same user accounts since the users aren't defined in the subscription, but rather at the tenant level. I think the reason this was confusing to me had to do with the fact that when you first start using Azure, you don't buy a tenant, but you buy a subscription, which means you're not starting at the top of the hierarchy. If you accept an offer to start a new Azure account, you're actually setting up a new subscription, but a subscription has to belong to a tenant. So an Azure tenant is automatically created in the background for you to be the parent of your new subscription. Once your initial subscription and tenant are set up and you log into portal.azure.com with your administrator account, you can add additional subscriptions to your tenant. It's just the initial subscription purchase that's a little confusing until you understand the relationship. Many people don't realize this, but if you're using Microsoft 365, formerly Office 365, you already have an Azure AD tenant because Microsoft 365 accounts are actually Azure AD accounts. If you have a Microsoft 365 subscription, you can log into portal.azure.com. This is your Azure AD tenant. You won't have any Azure subscriptions. Azure subscriptions are different than Microsoft 365 subscriptions but you can add an Azure subscription to this Azure AD tenant that was created when you set up Microsoft 365. Microsoft 365 accounts are also called work and school accounts. Microsoft 365 user accounts, work and school user accounts, and Azure AD user accounts are all synonyms, as opposed to a Microsoft account, which is a different thing. This is also confusing, and I'm planning on discussing this in a different video. I hope this helps you understand how this works. For help with Azure, reach out to me via circlebox.com. For more software development and cloud tips, look at my blog at the lower link. Thanks for watching.